you can't tell I am actually on the floor right now because I mounted my um, microfold brake on a short stump and I've already bolted down my vise so I can't really move it so the option is to have the show on the floor hi Catwoman hi Paulette welcome back to a pop me cute jewelry show so for you who don't know my name is Charisma Summers I am the dream visualist of pop me cute jewelry and I am here to show you tips and tricks on metalsmithing. Okay, let's. Hi, Carlene. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, all my cuties. Now, tonight we're going to learn about corrugating. Corrugating. I think that's how you say it, corrugating. Uh, that is what corrugation looks like. Okay, it's a little bit clear on camera. So yesterday we learned about all about simple fault forming using hammer right so if you haven't seen it uh, I suggest you and you have no prior experience on fault forming I would suggest you to watch this after you you're done with this live it's called how to fault form copper leaves that is the title so I'm not gonna go over a lot of uh, the basic stuff that we already talked about tomorrow. So here what I'm gonna show you. So basically you need to anneal your copper and this microfold break I think can take 18 gauge pretty well at least like 20 and even more because it can open high enough uh, to fold thicker metal but because it's metal and thicker metal would be less pliable the texture would not be as deep as if you are folding thinner copper like this one thinner sheet metal So, uh, first of all, you need to fold your metal, like this one is 24 gauge that I already folded and annealed prior shooting this video. So this is folded, if you can, can tell. And this one is just one piece, not folded, so I'm going to show you different ways to fold your metal. I thought I had a 26 too. 26, okay. This one is 26 gauge already folded on the long side of it. So we're going to shape the metal first before we corrugate. I mean, if you just want a square or a rectangle, then you can just anneal and then go it, go pass through the microfold break. But if you want a certain uh, shape, then you will need to shape it first. And you have to remember to stretch the shape because essentially with the corrugation, the metal becomes shorter than it was originally. So you need to cut it first 
and make sure it is uh, I'm gonna say at least twice longer than your intended uh, finished product but you have to uh, obviously experiment yourself to make sure that you get the the length that you want it but it's as always fault forming with fault forming you need to be generous and forgiving because sometimes it's a little unpredictable the result so yeah I think you need to be at least adventurous enough uh, to try and experiment over and over again and maybe uh, after a while you will uh, like have a formula about how much is the shrinkage of the metal so you can predict better like how long you, you need it to be to achieve what you want but don't be upset if it's not exactly what you want because it can be used it's the beauty of fold farming it's like so versatile and you can use it for a lot of things so let's see with with this one I'm going this one is a folded 26 gauge and with corrugation you can actually go down a little because uh, the process of corrugation gives the metal more structure so it's not easily bent like straight metal so let's see I'm just gonna cut a free, fro free form triangle like a long triangle for this one and we'll see uh, how it's gonna turn out That's the initial shape uh, of my 26 gauge and make sure that when the metal is going in it's quite dry from quenching so your uh, microfold break is not gonna rust so I'm gonna talk a little bit about this microfold break right here. Okay, turn on the light. Let me make it closer. Pull it a little closer. Okay, so. So let me show you how to set up this microfold break. Okay, let's show you like the full thing. So it comes with two uh, knobs right here. And let's see if you can see it. It has markings on the knob, under, underneath the knob. And it is in millimeters, but it's not fixed, so it can move around, right? Uh, the same both sides. So, what you want is to, uh, what is it? Make it like a tight both sides turn it so it is tight okay, it's kind of hard to make it focus because it's on the end okay that's better 
So let's see, I cannot move the lever here, right? And this is just a microfold break from Rio Grande, which I think it was about $125. I'm not sure how much they sell it it for now because I bought this quite a long time ago. So what you want is after you screw it tight both sides you want to move the number to zero so basically you're calibrating it uh, make sure it's sort of like right in the middle you can probably mark uh, the middle with sharpie or something to make sure that it is right in the middle so this is for so you know like how much of an opening you need on both sides so usually I try to turn it about half for the thinner metal so now it says 50 in the middle both sides so it can move and for some reason uh, this thing need seems to be like left-handed because I am right hand I'm right-handed and I usually uh, turn it I was I usually on the other side and I turn it this way and it makes the handle unscrewed so it seems like you need to move it like this way not this way see with the vibration this thing likes to turn by itself so you need to make sure that it is on the right uh, side I'm thinking like you can like tight this um, well, make sure that I am on the right okay. Zero. You can kind of make this, tighten the thing a little so it's not moving too much with the vibration. There you go. So let's see if this works for my Anil 26 gauge. You can use just about anything and one thing is uh, pretty simple to th uh, to note that you need to determine which way you want the patterns go. So if you want it to just be straight, you know, like this one, this one is pretty straight through. So you input, uh, you feed it straight straight straightly <laughs> so basically you want to put it straight into uh, the machine but if you want it to be like diagonal then you have to feed it diagonally you know so the machine like this so you put it like diagonally through the machine so uh, the pattern would be diagonal and you have to uh, also put in mind like which way diagonally you want it to be so if it's like going this way when you straighten it up then the diagonal would be facing down so if you want it to be facing up then you need to put this diagonally through the machine from that side Ooh, like so make sense so we'll see oh hi Namir welcome back See if 50 is enough. It's kind of hard to turn, so it's probably too tight. So I'm going to uh, do a full turn. So back to zero on both sides. And then we'll, I'm just going to feed it. 
I'm gonna feed it slightly diagonal. So like, a, let me let me zoom it in. So I'm going diagonal into the machine. Right. I need to face this a better. Like I said, I am I'm right-handed, so it is kind of tough for me to pull it that way. Push it that way, I mean. But there you have it. See, I fit it in diagonally from this side, so it looks like that. So let me anneal this, and hopefully I don't trip uh, on my way to my desk because like it's the floor is a mess with a lot of cables everywhere hi El good to see you here uh, I think you're feeling better now El was down with flu everyone Okay, this is annealed now. Uh, focus. This is annealed. Now I'm going to use my watchmaker uh, knife. And Catwoman yesterday said that she used oyster knife, so you can choose your weapon of choice to open this thing. Let me like uh, point it at me so it's not awkward. Okay, I want to like bend it a little so it's spread out better. rather hard because it's so tight so you might need a hammer for this sorry I said that it would be like minimal hammering but sometimes it's necessary because like I said the corrugation kind of uh, corrugation give it more uh, structure so it can be hard to open than a flat piece like yesterday. So you need to be a little uh, more meticulous with this. Okay. Let's see if we can try to flatten it out with my confirming plier. Probably easier if I just hammer it. I hope I don't hurt myself. Flat. Just want to show you a quick look of it. I mean, it's obviously not as quick as I hope it would be, but you know. Well, there you have it. So it produces a nice looking texture as like diagonal 
uh, lines going across and the middle fold also looks super interesting and by the way if you need some inspiration I have linked my jewelry that has uh, that has corrocation in it uh, on the description so you can click the link and see what I've made with this corrocation Okay, so that's one way to coral kit. And it's also look kind of like pasta, you know, like a macaroni or whatever. Uh, whatever it's called, the one that's uh, corrugated like this. And the corrugation give it a nice 3D looking uh, piece after you open it because it's hard to make it flat flat like a unless you hammer it of course you can force this by anneal it again and hammer it so you can open it better and I would like to say that I usually sand uh, this before I corrugate it because if not then you get like really rough edges and as you can see it can be rather hard to sand after it's corrugated so it's best to sand it before corrugation but it still need more sanding after the corrugation because the metal press uh, because of the, it's going through the machine and it press and kind of spread the metal so it's kind of like a rough on the inside so you will need something like the 3M bristle brush to smooth it out a little. 3M uh, bristle brush usually uh, do it better than you can with sandpaper. With sandpaper you only get the raised part because it's hard to get to the what is it, the, the valley like hills and valley here so the valley is kind of hard to reach area so like the 3M bristle brush would clean it up better. Okay let's see um what about if we go like two passes like this is one pass of Pretty sure this is this was twenty six. So I'm gonna cut a little bit of it. Mm. Okay, let's try this skinny thing. If it would go. And I want to, I want to tuck in uh, the ends so it will be smoother. I use my conforming pliers. Oops, I'm off camera. Use my conforming plier to push down uh, the sides. Confirming pliers, the nice thing about it, it has wide jaw, and mine is just the smallest one. Let's see if I need to. If I can move my light to my to the other side, because it gets a little dark on the camera. the sides in inwards okay now 
Now both sides have smooth edges. Uh, because I messed with the with the sides, I'm going to anneal this once again to make sure that it's ready to go. So, which way I should put it in, like just straight or should I go diagonally, like so many choices, right, choices, 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 which choice should I make, going straight or diagonally, uh, which way, which way you think. Should I go diagonally or should I go straight ahead? Let me know in the chat which way you want to see. Straight or diagonal? Okay, Paulette said the opposite way, so straight it is. Okay, let's see if this would go inside. Oh, let's focus on that. See, sometimes I have to use my foot for leverage. But you're right, don't lift my. As you can see, it takes a lot of effort. I could probably open it a little bit more. But there you go. Now we got a waffle. Who wants waffle? I love waffles. Pretty cool, right? Now you can use, let me see if, okay, might be able to see the texture better this way without the light shining straight on it. So, like both sides look pretty cool. So you can use this uh, as a like a cuff maybe like if you make it a little thicker with like 20 uh 24 gauge maybe with the sides folded in it adds a little structure so you can actually make like a thinner cuff like you don't have to uh go with heavy gauge because once you fold it in it basically doubles uh, the thickness but only on the sides so just this one would make really cool cuff or bracelet like this one is pretty short so you can add a chain or leather or something you know maybe add a little poppy on the middle so it's 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 a really cool waffle 
And you uh, you can also because we go this side, uh, we already corrugated uh, both sides, right? You can also tuck this ends in to make really smooth ends like uh, the two sides. You might need to anneal it, maybe not. Let's see. So I'm just going to use my confirming pliers to uh, tuck it in like what I did before. So this is one cool thing about the confirming pliers that it has a knife edge. So I bought see you can see it's really uh, thin and pointy on the top like you can get uh, like a folding pliers from hardware store usually like for roofing and whatnot but they don't have this knife edge so it wouldn't work for small stuff or like jewelry unless you have like a grinder or something I'm not sure if it would work because they're not built for that so I'm not sure like uh, if the material or like the process of heat hardening or something I don't know I'm not a tool maker but I've bought one thinking that I would save money because this thing is pretty expensive for pliers and it just didn't work because the they don't have the knife edge so it's pretty like a pretty large on the tip so I cannot I cannot fold metal like this so let's let's see it definitely falls into the specialty pliers uh, side I might need I might need to I might need to I don't know if you can see it I think you can I will need to uh, sand this because after I fold it apparently the edge is coming out from both sides and so this kind of like sharp so I will need to sand it when if I want to turn this into jewelry or I can probably do it before prior folding but let's see I'm going to fold this and as well Okay, for the confirming pliers, Rio Grande, Rio Grande, Rio Grande uh, has t three different sizes. This one is the smallest, about an inch wide, and then they have one and a half, and then two inches. That's what I, that's what from what I remember anyway. They sell it. They also sell it as a set of three, which saved you some more money. But I only bought one because I wasn't sure that if I would use it at all. But then apparently I use it so you know like on uh, sometimes I wish that I bought uh, the set of three. But whatever, I have one and I'll, I'll try to make do with just one until I think I need the rest of. So you probably need to, um, yeah, you, you will need to hammer it a little bit so it's not raised. You can see it's kind of raised a little because the corrugation. So you will want to hammer it with a nylon hammer so you don't really and make sure that only this part that you hammer 
So make be really careful not to hammer the rest of it or you'll flatten it out. Okay, so we've made two. One is just a simple folded uh, metal and then like we open it back. Uh, open it back out and it makes a really cool 3D looking uh, shape like pasta. And this one is the waffle foam. Let's just call it the waffle foam because it looks like waffles. So let's see other things that you can do with uh, straight, let's cut a little bit of this. Now this is 26 gauge uh, folded, corrugated. Probably need to anneal this, so I'll be back. Oh, by the way, the confirming flyers are by Swan, Swan Storm. That's why it's kind of expensive because, you know, they're the quality tool maker. And I think they're probably the only one that makes the confirming flyers because I haven't seen uh, other brands uh, came up with, a, with confirming flyers. Okay, I'm going to try this metal well takes a little because of the ridges. So uh, let's point this back to my apron. And by the way, for you that just uh, come watching, I'm actually on the floor right now because I mounted this corrugate, uh, microphone brake on my fires, which is uh, mounted on a short stump. So I can't really move it. And that's the only uh, vice strong enough to hold my microphone break. So let's see, we're going to pinch and make uh, textures just with using like small round nose pliers. And I learned this from uh, Mark. Uh, man, I don't remember his last name. Mark, Mark, Mark. Uh, the Rio Grande guy, and he shown this in the video, and it looks pretty cool. So let's, basically, you you will want to dress your pliers. So basically, you want to make sure that the ends are rounded. Mine is not yet uh, rounded. I I kept meant meaning to ground it, uh, smooth it out little bit but I haven't gotten the chance yet so basically you're pinching uh, the corrugation right see so you're pinching it like that so this is annealed metal and this is 26 I'm pretty sure gonna pinch another part let's it can 
can create a pretty interesting texture. Let me do one more. I'm not sure if you can see this. Can you see it? I think I need to use a thinner metal, probably 28 would, will, would work better. But basically by pinching you're creating a different kind of, you can make like a, like a diamond, is it a diamond uh, pattern on it? Let me do a little bit more and you can see it better. I'm just eyeballing this and if you want a super exact you probably want to use a roller to mark where you want to pinch it you can see it it's not as uh, severe as I would like it to look like but that's kind of cool uh, way of shaping the metal so you're not like just do a straight corrugation because you know after a while it can get a little boring so this is just another way to dress it up a little. I don't know what kind of pattern. Uh, do they, does it have a name? Like probably like a diamond I was thinking, but I'm not sure. Uh, Kat is asking, what is the name of that machine again? It's a microfold brake. Uh, that machine is called the microfold brake. So I mounted on my vice. This is a a four inch jaw. This is a and it is an old cra uh, is it craftsman. Yeah, it's an old craftsman um, vice that I found on eBay, and I think I got a good deal of it. So it needs to be mounted on a vice. I probably can add something to make sure it's not lifted up when I'm. Oh, uh, trying hard to, you know, make a double corrugation like the waffle one. But because this one is, as you can see before, it kind of lifted up because of the force that I'm putting it into. So I probably need to have something to, like a something going that way so it can stop it from lift it up from getting lifted up. And you can also corrugate a piece of bezel wire. This one is like a like five millimeters I don't have my let's see measure it I'm gonna measure it it's 
like it. This one is a six six point three width. So that's I think this is like a, a fourth of an inch. I also have a three millimeter one. Yeah, this one is a three millimeter, and you can like for my. You can find the video on my YouTube channel how I made the mini ruffles, uh, creation, my jewelry mini ruffles collection, and this is how I do it. I just feed a bezel wire into the microphone right so you can see like it gets shortened uh, pretty a lot from before Let's go. see this one for a for a thin vessel see how it's it gets lifted up a little For something like bezel wire, you don't really need to uh, anneal it first because it is so thin, like with wise. See, it gets shortened uh, pretty a lot from before. And you can use this for, I don't know, embellishment. There's a lot of things you can do with it. And um, if you want to do something like my mini ruffles, you will have to solder each of the valley before you hammer it. So that's kind of like the challenge of it because when you hammer it, if you don't solder it, when you hammer it, it's going to get flat, right? It won't, it won't uh, retain the shape, but once you solder it into like a piece of straight metal, solder each of the valley or wh whatever the dip, uh, whatever you want to call it, and it's going to stay in place, and when you hammer it, it will create a pretty cool effect. I think I have that mini ruffles uh, piece. So here's the mini ruffles. This is all sil silver and the bezel is fine silver it's a scallop vessel so this is after it is hammered and it creates like a ton of textures okay, you can see it better this way so if you don't solder it uh, each of the valley, it would it will just get flat, and then you wouldn't get this kind of texture. Okay, you can also, if you have a really thin metal, uh, let me cut, let me cut some. 28 gauge, 28 gauge, I have, um, no, 30 gauge, I have 30 gauge, let me cut some, Thinner uh, 
a 30 gauge here. You can actually hold it a few times. So I'm going to fold uh, this piece of 30 gauge copper, it's really thin, and I'm going to fold it a few times, just randomly fold it, you know. So this is just randomly folded. I'm going to flatten this out with my nylon hammer. And I'm going to anneal it and then feed it to this corrugator. like uh, when we feed it through the microfold break. Okay, I'm drying it out with paper towel. Okay, this is just a, after I annealed it, after I hammer it down and annealed it. So let's see, we're going to put it into this machine. Okay. I need to put my leg up again. I could probably open it a little better. So that's what we get. So with thinner metal you can actually fold it first and then you feed it and it will create something uh, like a, what is this, more sculptural. And we'll see, I'm going to anneal this and we'll see if we can open the fold to create something more unique than just a flat piece. Now I'm going to dry it off again with the paper towel and I'm going to try to open it to open the folds. Okay, let's turn it back to my apron. Hope you can see it. Oh, let's see. Just gonna right open uh, I'm gonna take a little maneuvering hope I don't hurt myself in the process Oh, 
that one is a little too close to this part. a little something right it's it's more interesting than just a flat piece so you can do a lot of things with the corrugation it doesn't have to be flat uh, let's see if we can separate this part put it down because it's kind of hard to do it on the in the air sorry I'm a little off camera right now okay I finally cut it open a little so it's this part I was trying hard to open So that is just one possibility. I mean, like you can try a lot of things with it. So let's see with that light to see some dimension to it. So there you have it. What, um, double, triple fold it and then corrugate it. You can probably rivet it to a thicker metal and to give it some more structure because the part that is uh, folded is a little too flimsy I think. So you definitely want to have some kind of backing but it can create a pretty cool, maybe a pendant or I think a pendant it's a little too yeah, maybe a bracelet can do alright too if you can remove the sharp edges And let's see what else, what else, what else you can do with the corrugation. Let's see if we put this, uh, this flat piece on diagonal and see how it would look like. Because we already get the straight, uh, the waffle uh, fold, right? So let's see for if we put it in diagonally. I'm going to fold uh, the edges like I did it before with the other one. I feel like I'm mentioning Rio Grande a lot, although I am not a seller of Rio Grande, but they do have a lot of tools that I like. Maybe they should pay me because I promote their uh, tools a lot. <laughs> So let's see, I'm going to fold the edges in. Make sure it's tucked well enough. Okay, it's all tucked in. Now I'm going to anneal this.
Okay, I think I have a plan for this. We're gonna see if I can uh, pass it three times through uh, the, uh, the microfold break. Because this is already once, right? And then I'm going to put it diagonally uh, the second time. And then I'm going to anneal it again and put it on the other uh, diagonal direction. So let's put Okay, that's the sideway waffle. And it's actually produce a pretty cool texture. Okay, straight waffle and diagonal waffle. Which one you like better? And Amir say, if they not pay you, send you free tools. Well, I would love that. <laughs> so I can demo more. I can demo more tools. So I'm going to anneal this and I'm going to go to the other way. Let's see. So anneal. I think I'm gonna try to cut it uh, in half so we can observe uh, the difference in texture. I'm going to cut it in half. Probably should have done it before I cut it. Where is my? Where do the scissors go? So this is why I always tell you to cut it before you texture it because if you cut it after you texture it, then it becomes flat where you cut it because you know the scissors or shears just push it in while the other part where it's already cut before it's textured it retain uh, the shape. Well, this one is just flat but it can work if you need to like uh, fold it or something so you know you just have to know like a plan ahead what do you want to make 
is I am just showing you how it looks like. Okay, let's put it in the other side. So it's going this way. I will need to. Uh, I'm opening up the screw a little bit more, so I have more room to uh, feed this into the machine. Okay, let's see. It goes easier. Okay, this is three, three passes. Three, uh, one regular, and then two diagonal. One straight and two diagonal. This one, this one is just two passes, straight and diagonal. Well, this one is straight and two diagonal. Like they both have pretty interesting texture. It's pretty different from the waffle too. So there you have it. You have straight and straight straight and two diagonals and straight and diagonal which one is your favorite I'll say the three passes is her favorite does look super interesting the edges make some pretty interesting uh, lines I think it's just going pretty wild over there and this is the cut line cut after texturing it's only got like one uh, pretty mild wave well, the other side has pretty crazy wave. Has been a pretty cool experiment, right? I wish this would show better. That's not bad. I've seen people make some in pretty interesting uh, pieces with uh, pinching, this pinching thing. Oh, another use of the confirming brake is to, if you want to make a fan, uh, let me go back to my apron. Uh, so if you want to make a fan out of this, you can pinch it uh, one side with the confirming brake, uh, confirming pliers. So basically, you're just pinching it close for each. Uh, I don't know, mountain or hill or whatever is the term for it. Oops, go blurry. So 
So that's already getting there. So now you're going from uh, the other side, like gathering uh, the part that is like far apart. So like so. tricky you can also just pinch it together after you're done with uh, individual pinching so there you have it you're, you gather the ends Can, I'm not sure what you're going to do with it, but I've done a cuff with this pinching method and put a, like I pinch it in the middle and then I put a, a large stone uh, on top of the pinch so it looks kind of like a what is it called? A uh, shibori? You know the... I think it's called shibori. The fabric, ribbon, sculpture thing with like a flow, like the pleated ribbon and you make something. I think it's shibori, but I could be wrong. Uh, Catwoman say it looks like a like seersucker. What is a seersucker? I, I that's a new word for me. A seersucker. This one or this one or this one? So I'm not sure where the when when the comment uh, came in. So there you go. You can like uh, like I say, you can make a cuff from it and like fold it on the long side. So the cuff going that way. Or you can do something like that and just go that way. It looks pretty really cool too. So we've done a lot of things today uh, from opening a folded copper to make some 3D sculpture thing. So let's see if I can hold everything. And then the waffle, three passes waffle. And two passes diagonal waffle and pinching. Oh, sear soccer is a type of fabric. Oh, thank you, thank you for explaining it, Lumir. So yeah, you can actually like if you make a person, jewelry or something, you can make this a skirt. So you can cut a, a shorter length and then maybe add a body and a head and this could be the skirt. So it has a lot of uses definitely. You can be really really creative with it. So I think that's the end of our show tonight. I have shown you how to use the microphone break to do a lot of things. So I hope you learned something from it. And hopefully tomorrow I don't have to uh, be on the floor again. Oh, uh, it's kind of... <laughs> 
kind of weird. I mean, like I'm used to be on the floor. I'm I'm Asian. I'm used to be on the floor. I sit on the floor all the time. But when I when making jewelry, I like to sit down, and you know, so I don't have to bend too much. Like I'm not set to to jewelry on the floor, so I don't have shorter table for me to work on. So it's. It's been like I need I need some back popping. My back is hurt. I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> so that's that's the end of the show tonight. I hope you enjoy uh, my demo on uh, the corrugation and you get ideas what to do with it if you have the machine or the tool or whatever it uh, you say it so there you go so I hope to see you tomorrow we're going to do um, the the ruffles there that's what I was gonna say the ruffles you've been you probably saw it in my a lot in my pieces uh, the one that I ruffle look like fabric not the mini ruffles but the big ruffles so tomorrow we're going to do that so make sure you stay tuned and come back tomorrow and we'll have fun again can you believe it's been 15 days this is the 15th life that I have done uh, I skipped two days because I had the stomach bug but yeah this is the 15th video and I want to report that I've already gotten uh, what was the last one? I think 77 thousand minutes so in a few days I will complete uh, my goal a lot faster probably like a week faster than uh, my projection of it so I, I want to thank you all for watching and helping me of gaining all of this uh, awesome watch minutes so hopefully I'll see you again tomorrow to deliver some interesting tutorials so you keep watching okay I'll see you tomorrow bye thank you Uh, oh, Ed says to help tighten the vise much tighter, use a piece of pipe large enough to fit over the vise handle about three feet long. It will give you much more leverage. Hmm? I'm not sure if I get it right now, but I will think about it. Oh. Yeah, I will think about it after this video ended. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Bye.